Welcome to the Medical Device Made Easy podcast. Here is Munir Lazuzi from easymedicaldevice.com. And today we will talk about Saudi Arabia. We have a lot of customers that are trying to register in the Middle East and Saudi Arabia is one of the country where uh, the regulation laws are really advanced. And also other countries are looking at, the, at this country for uh, what they are doing. Um, so this is, I think, important for you to understand what are the rules. And you will see that there are a lot of similarities with Europe also. So, And for that, I have with me Ahmed Endawi from Reg Institute. Uh, so Ahmed, welcome to the Medical Device Made Easy podcast. Thank you so much, Munir, for having me. And uh, I hope this is going to be a useful uh, podcast for uh, people who are listening. I'm, sh I'm sure it will be. So thank you for, for your help on that. But uh, first, before we start to ask my list of questions that I have here. Um, can we maybe have a small introduction of yourself, who you are, what you are doing exactly? Okay, so my name is Ahmed Hindawi. Uh, I've been uh, working in the regulatory affairs field in the Middle East for uh, almost 10 years now. And uh, I've been uh, supporting uh, clients from all over the world uh, to help navigate their uh, regulatory process in the Middle East. Uh, recently, I've uh, founded my own company, Registitude. And uh, the aim of uh, Registitude is to basically provide uh, the support that the manufacturers or uh, uh, entities, healthcare entities need uh, to enter the Middle East market. Great. Great. So um, I think you are the right person then to help us on that because you are, I suppose, having a lot of customers that are doing that. So uh, yeah, you, you know a bit, uh, a bit more about uh, what are the maybe tips or tricks uh, uh, that people should be uh, following or avoiding. Um, so let's maybe start with the first um, information that sometime we hear and maybe we can uh, and debug, debunk that. So we hear, as we said, that SFDA or Saudi Arabia is one of the regions where the regulation is really more advanced in terms of Middle East. So um, the, the question that we had almost is, if I'm registering my product in Saudi Arabia, is this also helping me to register in all the other countries like Oman or like uh, uh, Jordan or like uh, all the other countries that are around. So is this something that is uh, helping or can I just register in, the, in Dubai or UAE because I am uh, I have registered with SFDA? Okay, so uh, previously uh, the, the registration certificate for medical devices in Saudi Arabia, the one that you obtained from SFDA, would have helped you in some other GCC countries. However, oh. recently, it's not the case anymore. So all the GCC countries have their own regulations at the moment. Yes, the SFD registration certificate can be a supporting document, but it does not, uh, uh, it does, doesn't mean that you don't have to register your medical device in that specific country. So it does help, but it's not the only uh, method. You, you still need to register your product with the other authorities as well. Yeah, and uh, we hear also that, um, I mean, if SFDA is not mainly the kind of uh, uh, door of entry for GC, you can do that without uh, SFDA. Uh, we hear mainly or a lot that it's nearly really great if you have a CE certificate or FDA certificate for uh, for that. So is this like mandatory then for, 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 for those countries to have that? Okay, so talking about SFDA specifically, recently the, with the pathway that they have implemented, the approval certificate from other jurisdictions is not required. Okay. However, since the SFDA guidelines or the requirements are basically the same as the MDR, so manufacturers still have to provide the technical file related to the product. So in a, in a, in a way, you don't, have to, you don't need the approval, but in another way, you still have to provide the technical file that you will submit to Europe to obtain the CE mark. Okay. So, yeah, I, I think it's helpful then to to, to get um, already Definitely. in another country, but because you'll have already all the documentation. So, um, yes, exactly. And, and we hear also that SFD has really copied or copy pasted the EUMDR to their new regulation. So, is it true? Yes, 100%. Okay. The MDR is, has been copied and pasted exactly as it is to the SFDA, the technical file assessment pathway that SFDA has implemented in the last couple of years. So if any manufacturer has obtained the CE mark through the MDR or uh, even through the MDD, by the way, uh, both 
can be used to submit to obtain the technical file assessment with the SMDA. Even if you have not obtained the CE market and you're working your way to obtain the CE mark, you can use the same technical file that you were submitting to obtain the CE mark in order to submit it to SMDA to obtain their uh, certification as well. So, so it means that, yeah, as we have a technical file that uh, we spend maybe a few months uh, to create, uh, there is no way to reinvent a new dossier or new thing. We can take it as is and send it directly to the authorities, correct? Definitely, yes. With a few extra requirements that are very simple, but other than that, yes, it's basically the same uh, requirement. Yeah, because I, I saw one thing that um, I, I was not, uh, we, I saw some differences uh, on, on things is, for example, for the classification of products. Um, I know that, for example, in Europe, we are classifying that by ourselves. So we decide ourselves what is the classification. We still have the notified body that can maybe not agree with that. But in with SFDA, I heard that you have to apply for classification. So is it still the case? No, so the classification concept in SFDA is a different process, but classifying the product and de determining the risk class of the product is something that also similar to MDR, you, the manufacturer will classify the document and SFDA has the right to either accept or maybe say, no, this is not the correct classification for the product. But uh, classification in Saudi Arabia is basically to determine whether this product is a medical device or not. So yes, there is a classification process, but that's only to determine whether this product requires registration with SFDA or not. But determining the risk class of the product itself, this is also similar to what you to what the manufacturers are doing in other jurisdictions. And which is, I suppose, great if you are already selling in, in Europe because your classification or your class, product class will be the same uh, exactly. for SFDA. So there is no difference because if we go to the US sometime, we have some difference in classification in terms of demand or requirements. Here it will be the same. I suppose the same as what also Australia is doing because Australia is also copying a lot of what the uh, EU is doing. So I suppose this is helping also to harmonize the, the requirements here. Exactly, yes. So even for, let's say, for example, U.S. manufacturers, if uh, they have their classification in U.S., for example, class one or two or three, they have to follow the classification rules that have been implemented by MDR, by the MDR and the SFDA, which are basically the same. So whatever they're going to follow in uh, MDR, it's going to be the same for SFDA as well. So in terms of the technical file, as we said, there are some similarities. Um, is there, I have my technical file that I have worked on, as I've said. Is there some additional documents to provide? Or is there some additional things to, to, to mention on the document? Um, or no, there is nothing. Just that is sufficient and there is no additional really uh, requirements. So yeah, uh, basically it's all the same other than the, some uh, other national requirements that SFDA may require, for example, they have their own declaration of conformity that okay. you have to create according to the SFDA guidance. And other than that, some other documents that you need to fill out and forms that you need to fill out and uh, uh, submit them to SFDA. But other than that, the, the content of the technical file is the same for uh, SFDA as it is for MDR, uh, for, sorry, for MDR. But uh, the only thing that you have to notice is that you need to separate your technical file as per section, because in SFDA, the online portal, it's uh, divided into sections and the manufacturer has to, uh, let's say, construct the technical file in a way that it can be divided to 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 cope with the specific section that SFDA is requesting. Okay, no, I think it's uh, it's fair enough. I mean, it's also the same with notified body. Sometimes they are asking us to uh, to submit uh, on their portal also. So I suppose they have the, the same yeah. kind of, uh, of uh, requirements here. Um, just maybe... Uh, uh, as you have some experience on on that, so um, sometimes I mean we are, as you said, sending the dossier to the notified body, and they are accepting. We are maybe getting a C certificate for that. Did you ha ever saw like you submit the same dossier with the same information to the SFDA, and SFDA has some kind of uh, um, um, information or comment to the tests you have done, to the risk analysis you have done, to the elements you have done. So was there some kind of 
is this happening also that they can have a different opinion than what the notified body has? Yeah, so what never happens is that maybe an application get, goes through without any comments. Okay. I said they usually usually have a lot of uh, comments on the application, or yeah. they do have they do raise comments on any technical file that that has been submitted. But the goal is to minimize the comments as much as possible. So you need to make sure that you're following because even if you're submitting the same technical file that you're submitting in MDR, and in in basically. It should be the same if you obtain the CE mark in Europe, then it should be accepted in SFDA. Sometimes they have comments or questions related to the way the file that the, the way the file that uh, has been submitted or some of the documents that are not clear, maybe, and uh, they need more clarification. Uh, for SFD, it's a different authority. Uh, so let's let's assume that they're reviewing the file from the beginning. So they might have some questions on the technical file itself. Even if the file has obtained the CE mark, you still need to uh, provide them clarifications if they need. So this basically, it's either uh, in the form of letters that the manufacturer can explain this, or maybe meetings that you help hold with SFDA to explain to them what what this point is or how this comment uh, can be resolved on, and all of this. But yeah, uh, in any submission that you submit to SFDA, you can expect that you will receive comments, but it's how you handle the comments. It's uh, This is how you proceed with your application and finally obtain the certification. That you need. Great. And um, I suppose as other, as what is happening also in other countries um, and also in Europe, um, if I am a manufacturer that is located outside of Saudi Arabia, I should have an authorized representative or somebody in the region that is representing me. So how is this working on that? What, what is really the requirements for um, entering the country and how we can manage also licenses? Because I, uh, there are some license owners. Is it me as manufacturer who owns the license or is it the person that represents me who owns the license? So how is the, all this working there? Okay, so the very good thing about SFD and Saudi Arabia in general is that all the licenses that are uh, generated by SFD are 100% owned by the manufacturer. Okay. So the manufacturer owns all the certificates that are, that are issued in SFD. Uh, basically, what they need is two things. First of all, they definitely 100% need an authorized representative in Saudi Arabia because that authorized uh, representative is the one who will basically deal with SFDA in all matters related to product registration. Uh, later on, we're going to talk about this as well, post-marketing activities, anything related to uh, regulatory, the regulatory uh, aspect of the product, this will be dealt by uh, the authorized representative. The second thing that they need is the importer or the distributor who is going to Distribute or uh, distribute or sell their products in the in the market. Uh, can they combine both? Yes, your importer can be your authorized representative. Uh, however, some companies prefer to separate uh, the commercial aspect of the uh, business from the regulatory aspect of the, of the business. So they appoint different authorized representatives, and this way they can maybe appoint more than one importer. So that they don't, for example, uh, register all their products with one importer and that importer is the authorized representative. Later on, if they decide to move to another importer, then it's not an, it's it's a simple process, but it takes time to transfer all the licenses from that importer to another importer. However, if you have an authorized representative that has all your licenses registered, then you don't need to worry about moving from one importer to another importer or let's say, for example, appointing an additional importer for your products. So yeah, I, I, think, I, think, I, think, I think what you say is, makes sense, and it's, I suppose, exactly the same as what is happening in Europe. Uh, if your mm -hmm. importer is also your authorized representative, then uh, the problem is that you have to mention the name of your authorized representative on the product. Uh, so if you change your authorized representative, then you have to change all the packaging for your product. So you have them to transfer this to another person, the contract and everything, etc. So it can be similar here in Europe. So I'm happy to hear that, yeah, in Saudi Arabia, they are also using this because what we hear with some other countries is that, uh, yeah, the importer should be your authorized representative and then he owns the license and then you cannot... If I can say move out of him without moving the license, which makes can take time and money and everything. So I suppose 
uh, we are recommending really this strategy to have a separate authorized representative and importer so that it gives you more freedom to change or to uh, to um, to update uh, update that um is um so an importer is needed an authorized representative is needed they are they should both be in uh in uh, in Saudi Arabia um do they need to communicate together or they can be really separate and there is no need at all for them to to be uh, working together yeah so in, in in all my years of working in Saudi Arabia I think uh from the authorized representative to the distributor or the importer communication is very very minimal Okay. Uh, they barely communicate. Uh, they don't need to communicate because uh, uh, the authorized representative is dealing with the manufacturer and SFD. There are no uh, responsibilities that fall on the authorized representative to communicate with the importer unless there is a post-marketing activity. And most of the time, this is uh, done by the manufacturer. Okay. Um I wanted to ask you also another question about uh, the medical devices. So we have, as we said before, multiple classes. Um, in Europe, we have a specific requirement for class one, which is self-declaration, uh, um, mainly to say that I declare that uh, my product is following the legislation, uh, the EUMDR, so I can place it on the market, etc. cetera. Uh, do we have the same principle for class one or, or lower devices? So can I do a self-declaration also in Saudi Arabia to say I am complying with the Saudi Arabia law and then you have to authorize my product to enter? Or is there some different rules there? Hey, just a second. Do you need an EU, Swiss or UK representative? Then choose Easy Medical Device. We can represent you and also become your importer. Contact us at eo at easymedicaldevice.com. Well, uh, the, there used to be a, a pathway for class one non-sterile and non-measuring products where the uh, importer is the owner uh, okay. of the product. Uh, they submit a very simple form or request to SFDA. It's almost like the self-declaration in Europe. But uh, this, this, use, this was implemented back until September 2022. After September 22, all products, let's say all medical device products or IVD products, they have to follow the technical file assessment. Okay. And they all have to provide the technical file documents in order to obtain the certificates. So this this method was there until September 2022, but it stopped and all the certificates that were issued before September are still valid until their expiry date. But after that, they need to uh, submit uh, the technical file to SMDE to obtain the certificate. Great. So, I mean, it's, this is okay. This is the big difference then with Europe. So, you yes. need to submit a technical file, which is not the case in Europe. You just, uh, in Europe, you just need to uh, submit a declaration of conformity. I know that some countries or some uh, competent authorities, uh, just to verify, they are asking you, do you have a technical file? Do you have this or do you have that? But here, yeah. So, Saudi Arabia. Uh, there is no more self-declaration, if I can say. So you have to submit a technical file. They have to be reviewed, and then they have to be accepted uh, uh, for for that. Which is, um, yeah, the the difference here. And w one thing to note, though, is that for the class one product, uh, the requirements uh, SFD are not that uh, insistent or the on on providing the full requirements of the technical file because they know that class one products or low risk devices usually they don't have all of the technical files or the technical documents available so there there are possibilities on uh, maybe providing uh, letters that these these documents are not available because this is the class one product so the the requirements uh, let's say uh, are the same but you you don't have to provide each and every one of them uh, if you don't have them then you just provide a justification to SLD and then it's uh, upon their uh, approval, then we can proceed with the application. Okay. No, I think it's uh, it's fair enough. So um, next uh, topic for me is the UDI. So we have now in Europe, the new requirements for UDI and UDAMED, etc. cetera. Um, is it, I heard that SFDA is also following UDI. So is it implemented now? Should we have UDI? Can I use the same methodology as what I'm using in Europe, or is there a big difference? So what's 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 the case there? So uh, the UDI uh, guidance or the announcement that UDI will be implemented has been uh, announced almost three years ago, and uh, each year uh, with the deadline approaching, they uh, extend the deadline further. 
So hopefully the deadline is September 2023. Okay. I'm not sure if this will be extended or not. But anyway, this applies to all classes. Previously, it was like September 2022 for, for high, high risk devices and then September 2023 for low risk devices. However, now it's it's all uh, products or all classes that need to have their UDI data available by September 2023. By having them available, this means that they have to submit all the UDI information to a separate portal that SFDE has implemented. Uh, submit all the, the UDI data of the products that they're shipping to Saudi Arabia and all the products that are approved by SFDA by September 2023. Uh, according to the announcement as well, the products that have been uh, or that will be uh, shipped to Saudi Arabia after September 2023 and they're not registered on the UDI portal will not be uh, cleared uh, for shipping. Okay, so I think this is really an important information here. So I'm not sure if people heard about it or if know about that. So the deadline is really September 2023, where yes. you have to have a UDI and on is it having to have a UDI on the product or just registering on the portal with the UDI code? Both. 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 So you have to present them on the labels and they have to be registered on the portal as well. Okay, so it means that all products that will be entering uh, Saudi Arabia from September 2023, they have to have the UDI code on the product plus to register the the the, the product on the the platform. So, yes. since when this was announced, or since when this was uh, people have, are in, are aware about that? This has been announced back in 2020, and the, the deadline, as I mentioned, uh, has yeah, been moved. extended several times. Yeah, but. Uh, I think this deadline, I think I, I'm not, I don't believe that this will be extended further. Okay. Uh, the issue with the portal was that uh, the data entry for the UDI portal was done uh, in a single manner, you know, one by one, one entry by one entry, Where, whereas other, uh, other jurisdictions, there was the option of just uploading the whole UDI file for all the products, and that's it. So uh, what SFD is implementing at the moment or trying to implement prior to the deadline is the bulk upload option where the manufacturer can upload uh, the products, all of them, all at once, and just be done with it. But uh, doing this uh, entry by entry uh, is very time consuming. Yeah. And this uh, can only be done by the authorized representative, by the way. So the authorized representative who registered your product will have them uh, shown in the UDI portal where, has, where, where he has to submit the UDI information for the product. So SFD is working on the bulk upload option that will save a lot of time. And this way, hopefully, it will be easier for the manufacturers to comply with the deadline. So another information that you've said is that it's not the manufacturer himself who will be going to the portal. It's the authorized representative that is in Saudi Arabia that should do this exercise. Exactly, yes, because uh, the UDI portal is linked to the authorized representative who registered the product. So if the product is registered with authorized representative X, the UDI portal information will only be shown in his portal, in his account. So this is important because now we are switching to the UK methodology because this is exactly how UK is working on. I, we are registering products for, for UK as we have also a UK representative role as Easy Medical Device. And I have also done this exercise of registering the products on the MHRA. And yeah, one by one is a nightmare. But also in the UK, they have this bulk upload. So we have an Excel a template of Excel file. They are sending that to us. We are filling all the information. We click on a button to say it's validated. And it's, when, it, when we see the green light, we say, oof, it's fine. So now we can upload that and it appears directly on the, on the website uh, of the MHRA. So yeah, I suppose this will be saving a lot of time. And I hope, yeah, this will be implemented uh, as soon as possible. But uh, good also to know that, yeah, it's uh, manufacturers. Have, so I suppose also the authorized representative are chasing now manufacturers if they have not done this exercise. Exactly, yes. Because uh, according to the announcement by SFDA, uh, any products or any shipments that come after September 2023 20, and their information is not registered on the UDI portal, the shipments will not be cleared. So. The manufacturers are chasing this and the authorized representatives as well are chasing this, as well as the importance. 
all, all the parties need to comply with this. So maybe important just to maybe win one month of delay. So is it September 1st, 2023 or September 30th, 2023? It's, it's not, I, I don't think it's uh, identified whether it's September, but if the only mention September 2023, I assume it's the end of September. Okay, okay. So yeah, let's assume that. Yeah, uh, yeah. hopefully. M, M for September 1st, but let's assume it's September 30th. Exactly, yes. <laughs> Um, in terms of uh, post-marketing surveillance now, so we have these rules also in Europe for post-marketing surveillance, where you have to have a post-marketing surveillance plan, then to wait maybe one year and then collect all the data and then prove that your product is still fine with maybe a PMCF, etc. So are we talking about the same rules here? Is it the same way or is it like just report when you have in-house sales or report when there is in-house data? So for Saudi Arabia, it's much simpler. Uh, first of all, we're talking about, let's say, if any uh, if any incidents or adverse events happen in Saudi Arabia, uh, they're categorized into two options. First of all, if, if this is uh, considered as an adverse event, then it has to be immediately reported within three working days to SFDA. You have to report it to SFDA immediately. And then the follow-up actions and all the progress reports, this, this is done basically on a timeline as well that SFD has put for the manufacturers. Uh, other incidents that uh, are not considered uh, as adverse events or just uh, complaints, for example, this can these can be compiled and sent to SFD on a monthly basis or bi-monthly or whatever, but just to keep them updated that uh, the, we've received these complaints that are not deemed as adverse events or not deemed as incidents that are worth investigating. Uh, this is the report that we have, and you send them to SLD. Of course, everything is done to your authorized representative. Uh, so uh, it's either an adverse event that has to be reported immediately or other complaints that uh, do not affect the patient uh, or health uh, in general that can be compiled and sent to SLD on a monthly basis, for example. Okay, and so yeah, it's not really the same here with uh, with with, the, with Europe uh, requirements or UMD requirements. Um, uh, another question is about uh, audits. So we have notified bodies that are auditing our companies every year. Is there any program for audits from Saudi Arabia, or when you are registering, you have a license for how long is the license again? Or how when you should renew the license again? It's it's a maximum of three years, three but years. it also depends on the approval certificate that you have in the application. Sometimes the approval, for example, if you have a CE mark that's valid only until next December, for example, then you will receive the SFD certificate until December. So okay. then you have to renew once you have the new CE certificate. So is there a regular audit or something that is done by Saudi Arabia? No, no, they do not perform audits. So they basically uh, depend on the, uh, because one of the requirements of the technical file is the quality management system and the evidence that the manufacturer has a quality management system from an accredited uh, notified body, for example. So if that is provided, then that's enough. It does not require SMD to perform an audit. On okay, so yeah. So the ISO 13485 is mandatory, I suppose, then? Definitely, yes. Okay. I heard also that this is mandatory for manufacturers, but also now I hear something about importers also that should also be ISO 13485. Uh, so yes, uh, unfortunately, the deadline is also September 2023. Okay. For all importers, authorized representatives, any healthcare entity that deals with medical devices in Saudi Arabia, uh, the deadline is by September 2023, you need to comply with ISO 13485, uh, either by an accredited body from SFDA uh, or if you're a distributor or an importer of low risk devices, then you can obtain a certificate from SFDA. In that case, they will come and perform the audit according to the ISO 13485 standard. And based on that, they will issue the report uh, to the manufacturer that they do comply, or the importer, sorry, that they do comply with the ISO with the 13485 standard. So in, in general, all manufacturers outside KSA, they need, they need to ensure that their importers, their distributors, their authorized representatives, all comply with the ISO 13, 
485 prior to September 2023. Exactly. Yeah, because I suppose that some of them are now listening and say, oh, I don't know if my <laughs> importer or distributor is ISO 13485. So yeah, please check, verify, uh, because after September, then um, they will maybe not be uh, able anymore to help you. Maybe yes. they are in the process now to be ISO 13485, but uh, it can take time. So three months to do that is a really short uh, timeline. So uh, yeah, I hope they are already starting about that. Um, so any anything else that you want to maybe to provide as an information for, for our audio, uh, audience? Okay, so uh, the, there has been a new feature that was introduced by SMD as well, which is the overseas manufacturer account. Okay. Uh, this overseas manufacturer account is, I believe, is a great tool for manufacturers because they can use this many, uh, account first of all, even if uh, they do have an authorized representative. Uh, they can submit all the registrations through the account. They can access all the registered products that they have with SFD through this account. Uh, they can follow up on any renewals. Uh, if they need to do any updates or variations to the product as well, they can submit all of this through their own account. Sometimes uh, let's assume that authorized representative, uh, if you have a separate entity as an authorized representative, uh, you do not uh, know for sure or 100% if uh, what you're asking them to do or what you're requesting them to do, uh, they're doing it uh, to the full extent or uh, if there are some information that you do not want to share with your authorized representative, especially for the technical file, then you can do so, do so through your own account as well. Uh, and finally, uh, importers as well. If you have an importer that, that has been appointed as your authorized representative, it's not also ideal for the manufacturers to share all the technical information with the importer, uh, especially if they're not a regulatory uh, authority or a, a regulatory consultant. It's almost uh, better. It's always better to have these documents uh, under your own super supervision uh, or have someone uh, deal with them uh, or submit all these applications through your own account so that you can have visibility. Uh, you can have transparency on everything that's been happening under your own eyes as well. So it's a benefit for the manufacturer and uh, definitely it will help them access the information easier and also be able to deal directly with the SMD. Of course, uh, they're always going to need someone who can help them uh, understand how the SMD operates in terms of submitting applications and how the structure of the documents can be done in a way that we will not receive a lot of comments, but other than that, you will always have the visibility on everything that's been that's happening with the SMD. Great. I think yeah, transparency is really important because sometimes the manufacturers are a bit dependent of who is in the country. So at the end, it's like I don't really know what's happening there. I don't see anything, so I'm not sure what's happening. So I suppose this is a tool that can be really help helpful for exactly. for for getting that. So um, great. I, I'm, I'm sure that all this information will be helpful for, for the audience and um, providing some support. Um, you are Where are you located again? Uh, so uh, I'm located in Dubai. We have okay. our headquarters in Dubai. Uh, we have uh, an office in uh, Saudi Arabia as well, in Riyadh, and we have uh, an office in Egypt. Great. And how, why, I mean, how, why people should contact you if, if they need any support? So what, what can you offer as a service for them? So we have uh, we have uh, a very a wide variety of services that we can provide to the manufacturers all health or healthcare entities in general. Uh, mainly, we provide support in the regulatory aspect of their uh, products, whether it be uh, pre-market or post-market activities related to your products, uh, clinical trials as well, uh, and the regulatory support in terms of registration with the healthcare with the healthcare authorities in uh, the Middle East uh, and we make sure that, as I mentioned, what we what we aim for is to provide them with transparency, visibility, and make sure that we provide all the services that they require in a timely and professional manner. So any kind of services that are related to regulatory or pre-market or post-market. Great. So thanks, uh, Ahmed. And uh, I will place all your information, so your uh, LinkedIn account and uh, all the information about your company also, Reg Institute, 
uh, so that uh, people can verify and check and maybe contact you. Uh, I will also place some uh, links on the show notes about SFDA governments and SFDA guidances. Uh, so don't hesitate to go to the show notes and uh, you'll find all those information. And I suppose that, yeah, if you have any question, you can directly go to Ahmed and ask him and maybe uh, also he can maybe one of your uh, support for registering your devices in a Saudi Arabia or Middle East because uh, he can help you also for the others. Okay, so uh, Ahmed, really, thank you for your help. Thank you for your support. I'm sure this will be helping a lot of people there. And uh, yeah, I hope to see you for maybe another episode about uh, how to register in another country in the Middle East. So thank you for your support. Thank you so much, Mir, for this opportunity. And yes, hopefully this is the beginning of many other Thank you so much. Great, thank you. Bye-bye.